Okay, hi folks. So this is a real quick lesson on something that we call geometric probability. But we have to understand what does probability mean, okay? And you've, you've studied this, probability. Think about what you studied about what the probability um, of you getting ahead if you flip a coin, okay? So remember doing that? So the probability of getting one head if you flip a coin is one half because one is the favorable outcome. You can only get one head, right, because there's one head, but there are two possible outcomes. Okay, so the probability of getting a head, and this is how we write it, we write P head, okay, the probability of getting a head is one half, okay, or one out of two. And that's called the probability. So again, the probability of an event happening, any event at all, if, even if it doesn't have to do with coins, is the favorable outcomes over the possible outcomes. So if I gave you a question like, I have four marbles in a sack, and there is one red, one blue, one yellow, and one pink, what is the probability that I would get a pink if I randomly put my hand in the sack to pick it out. And of course, there's only one pink marble, but there are four marbles total, so the probability of getting a pink is one over four. Now another way that we can write the probability is in percentages, and one-fourth is the same as 25%. I know that you know that, okay? So we're gonna move this on to area and geometry, okay? So the next thing we know or we're going to learn is called um, geometric, excuse me, I forgot the word, geometric probability, okay? And what does that mean? That means, well, we're going to look at specific shapes and we're going to say, for all intents and purposes, what, what are my favorable outcomes and what's the favorable region versus the entire region? So that's what geometric probability is. That looks weird, let me give you an example. Okay, so here's a target game. I think I need to zoom in. Okay, here's a target game. This entire target game is a 12 by 12 square, okay? So that means that if I look at the probability of the event happening, the area of the entire region is what goes on the bottom of the fraction. So we know that the area of the entire region is 144 and it's square inches because everything is about area, right? So we can just look straight at that. Now if I read this question, we're going to assume that a dartboard, that a dart you throw will land somewhere on here. <laughs> That's what we have to assume. We have to assume for everything that we do that it doesn't ever land outside the shape, that it's always going to land inside the shape, okay? Um, and is equally likely to land at any point on the board. You're going to find the probability of hitting each of the blue, yellow, and red regions. The radii of the concentric circles are 1, 2, and 3 inches respectively. Okay, so that means this blue one is 1, the yellow one is 2, and the, and the red one is 3. But we're only going to practice this a little bit. So we're going to say, what is the probability that it will fall somewhere inside one of the circular regions? So I'm going to say probability of any circle. Okay, so that means I have to find the probability of it falling anywhere in here. And if I know that this radius is 3, I have to find the probability of the area of the circle and then over the entire area. So what is the area of this circle? Well, it's 9 pi. So 9 pi out of 144. What I'm going to do is I would never put this in terms of pi because I want a percentage. I want to know what, what the actual um, percentage is. 9 pi divided by 144, so it's 
4, etc. So if I look at that, I can approximate this to about 20%. So everyone see how I can make that 20%? Okay. So I can say that this is about 19.6% or I can say this is about 20%. So that's what geometric probability is. We could do a bunch of these, but we're not going to. We'll do them in class. I just want you to get an idea of what geometric probability is. So if I look at this and I don't know any measurements, what do you suppose, just by guessing and looking at the way it is, what's the geometric probability of being in the shaded region? Okay. So again, we're going to say, well, what's the whole region and what's a piece of the region? Well, it kind of looks like all of these are equilateral triangles. So this is going to be 1 out of 4. So I can also estimate this as 25%. If I throw something and it's definite to land somewhere on the shade, it's 25% of the time it's going to land within the shaded region. This one looks a little harder, right? So we might want to just throw in some numbers because it looks hard to actually estimate. But let's throw in some numbers and figure it out. Okay? So it's always easy to throw in the number one, right? So if the radius of this semicircle is one, what is the area of the entire shaded region? Think about it. So if we look at this, I want you to pause this get an answer and then unpause it and you'll see what I'm going to say. If I look at these two, there's one circle and I look at these two, there's another circle. So as a radius of one, this circle would be pi, this circle would be pi. And if it's a radius of one, then that means the side of the square is going to be two, so the area of the square is going to be four. So I know the entire area of this whole region is going to be 4 plus 2 pi. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. So what is the probability that if I throw it, it's going to land in one of these shaded regions? Well, this is the shaded region. So it's going to be 2 pi over 4 plus 2 pi and I can't cancel those two pi's. There's no such thing as doing that, okay? So I do this in my calculator. Two pi, oops, sorry, let's do that again. Two pi divided by parentheses four plus two pi. And that gives me about 61%. So I'm going to put a little squiggle here, and it's about 61%, because 0.61 is about 61%. And so that's the geometric probability for that. Okay? I'm going to ask you to try these four. So I want you to pause them, and I want you to try these four. Now, if you notice, I notice that there's a central angle measurement of 120 here. So you have to think about that, right? Here, this pentagon looks very, very similar to this one. So I want you to think about that. Okay? These are marks on purpose, okay? So again, if you're having a hard time thinking about it as a variable, you can put some numbers in here and do it that way. And the same thing goes for number 20 you could put some numbers in there and try it that way. Okay, so pause that. I want you to try those four. And then I want you to try number 48 and 49. Okay, so those are the six I want you to try. The last thing that we're going to do is we're not going to do this today. I want, you, I want you to read it so you're ready for it. This is a challenging question. We're going to do this in class tomorrow. But I want you to read it and be ready for it. So let's be reminded. Geometric probability, and you should write this in your notes. Okay, Is the probability of a favorable outcome and in this case, it's going to be the area of the favorable region. Mm -hmm. 
over the area of the total region. Okay, I promised it would be under 15 minutes, and it is.